Zero doubt about it, I'm addicted to fly fishing. I figure that's okay though, there's definitely worse things to be addicted to. Over the years, I've become a semi-decent fly fisherman and even put a couple nice fish in the net. But the thing is, it wasn't always that way. I completely sucked at first. I literally did everything wrong. Wrong presentation, wrong style, wrong flies. If you could do it wrong, that was me. I guess you could call it learning the hard way, but you gotta start somewhere. I've been fly fishing pretty consistently now for seven years. And over that time, I've learned quite a bit. I've also gotten a lot of questions over the years, and I'd finally like to give back to the YouTube community and all the people that have asked questions over that time, and hopefully put some knowledge out there to help aspiring fly fishermen and fly fisherwomen. Please know, these are simply my humble opinions, and my answers are all very likely highly subjective. With that said, I think I can offer some helpful pointers to those looking to get started in fly fishing. So let's get right into it. <laughs> Look, this is a bit of a trick question, but I'm gonna go ahead and say yes and no. For starters, this does not need to be an expensive new hobby. My initial setup looked like this. I bought an Orvis Encounter 5 weight 9 foot fly rod outfit for $169. This included the rod, the reel, and the fly line and backing. I also bought Reddington Crosswater waders for $119. I got some Frog Togs wading boots for $30. And then just a few little things, a Rio 9 foot 5X tapered leader, a spool of Rio 5X tippet, and a couple of grasshopper patterns. So it was a grand total of $350, not too bad. And of course I've upgraded many times since then. Uh, now I've got a whole collection of crap in my garage, but this was what I did to start and it worked fine, it caught fish. So I think one of the biggest misconceptions about fly fishing is that you have to be some sort of masterful caster. Think a river runs through it and the giant shadow cast that goes hundreds of feet into the air. I was literally intimidated and stayed away from fly fishing for decades because I was intimidated by the casting. But honestly, for getting started with nymph fishing, you really just need to learn one simple cast. Let's take a closer look. Hey guys, I just wanted to show you real quick how easy a cast is when you're nymphing. Basically, you pick it up and you flip it. You let it drift, pick up, flip, repeat. Let me show you. Indicator and the flies are down here. Pick up. This one is super easy. There's a ton of great books out there, but honestly, my favorite by far is the Curtis Creek Manifesto. It's been described as the greatest beginner's fly fishing book ever written, and I couldn't agree more. It's written in comic book form, so it's easy reading, and I still reread this book every few months. On one of my last trips, I used the bomb proof hole stocking method that I've only seen described in this book to put a crazy number of beautiful fish in the net. Again, if you're looking for one book, I think this is a great one to start with. So 
I Googled fishing knots and I found that there's over 65 different knots used for fishing. The good news is I think you really only need two to get going. Let's take a closer look. Okay, so the first knot is called the triple surgeon's knot. This is my go-to knot for attaching my tippet to my leader. It's a very reliable knot and pretty easy to tie. The second knot is the improved clinch knot, which is great for tying flies to tippet. I'll be sure to leave a couple of links in the video description that demonstrate each of these knots being tied. With a few minutes practice, you'll be able to master these in no time. As with all things fly fishing, things can get complicated in a hurry. When you first step into a fly shop, you're likely gonna see hundreds if not thousands of different bugs to choose from. Luckily, you can simplify that process, especially if you start with one style of fly fishing such as nymphing. You can whittle away a lot of those bugs from hundreds or thousands down to probably five or six that you need for a successful day out on the river. So let's take a closer look at those. Number one is the squirming worm. Irresistible and highly effective, this pattern is especially good after a bump in flows. Number two, the zebra midge. This simple but super effective larva pattern is one of the most widely used and something every angler should carry. Number three, the gray RS2. No doubt my favorite emerger pattern and quite possibly my favorite fly. My personal best brown trout that was nearly 30 inches long was caught on a size 22 gray RS2. Hard to believe such a small fly could tempt such a large fish. Number four, the Paradigon Nymph. These nymphs are perfect for situations where you need a small fly to sink quickly in deep or fast water. And number five, the Mercury Midge. This pattern consistently fools those selective tailwater trout that are turning down all my other offerings. When I'm on the struggle bus, this is the fly I usually reach for. All right guys, time to talk through probably my finest piece of art ever. It's a masterpiece. But first things first, when I'm fly fishing, I'm using a style called nymphing. What does nymphing mean? It means I'm fishing below the surface and I'm targeting trout that are probably two to four feet in depth and they're feeding below the surface. Now, I know that's not as aesthetically pleasing as dry fly fishing where you're laying a fly on the surface, it's floating along and you watch a trout swim up and slam that fly that's on the surface. But nymphing is highly effective and that's why I do it. Just so you know, about 80% of a trout's diet is found below the surface. So while dry fly fishing is awesome and looks really cool, 80% of the time the trout are feeding below the surface. And that right there is why I nymph. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's run through my typical setup. First off, a nine foot five weight fly rod is a great all around fly rod that will cover pretty much any river conditions you'll find here in Colorado. I use a five weight floating fly line that I connect to a seven and a half foot 5X fluorocarbon tapered leader. Generally on the bottom quarter of the leader, I attach a thingamabobber or strike indicator to detect strikes and help suspend my flies through the drift. At the end of my leader, I use a triple surgeon's knot to attach my leader to the first 12 inch section of 5X fluoro tippet. At this connection point, I also add my split shot just above the knot. I attach my first fly, generally an attractor, like a squirmy worm from that first 12 inch section of tippet. I then tie another 12 inch section of 5X fluoro tippet onto the hook bend of the first fly using an improved clinch knot. My second fly is attached to this 12 inches of tippet. 
And finally, I tie another 12 inches of 5X tippet onto the hook bend of the second fly and then attach my third fly. And there you have it guys, the triple nymph rig. This setup can be deadly because it covers multiple layers in the water and it offers up multiple different menu items to the trout. The downside is because you're getting down deeper, you're likely gonna hang up on the river bottom at some point and trust me, it's triple the pain when you lose your triple nymph rig. It happens, it's part of the price you pay to get those flies down to the feeding fish. But honestly, I think the pros outweigh the cons and that's why this is my go-to setup for fly fishing in Colorado. All right guys, so that's all I've got time for in today's episode, but I really hope that you found this helpful. If so, please hit that like button, leave a comment, a question, or even a suggestion for the next video. I'd love to address it for you. Thanks as always for tuning in, and until next time, take care.